Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. We got the 10 Ways CG600 Pro coming up next on Now Let's Review. So if you don't watch any further than the first five seconds of this review, I'm gonna give you three words that sums this up, okay? Simple, relaxed, quiet, okay? If that's what you're looking for, <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah, I think I would go light, mm -hmm. quiet, mm -hmm. and cycler. Cycler? I think that you should be a cycler if you want this bike. What's a cycler? Somebody who normally bikes a regular bike. Okay. I, I think it's I'm less of an evil. I'm gonna push back on that. I think that if you're into lightweight bikes and you're gonna go 22 miles an hour, this is not your bike. Let me let me explain why. So, great bike, love it, by the way. Yes. It's a 6160 aluminum frame, which means that it's a fairly lightweight e-bike. It weighs 37 pounds with the battery in it. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, as you know, we've reviewed some bikes that are, you know, 70 pounds. Yes, and that means that one person can lift it, um, and it's even easier when you take the battery out. I was able to get this uh, up on our review table fairly easily when it, with the battery out. And that is a big difference. I, I will say we have lots of fat tire e-bikes that weigh, you know, 70 pounds. Mm -hmm. it usually it takes two people to get it up onto something like um, a bike rack. Having having it be one person, that's a completely different ball game. Right, so there's no suspension on this. Um, it's a very simple layout. And that's why I say it's, a, we both say simple. I think mm -hmm. it's for, you know, it's for simple rides. And if that's what you're looking for, it's really great. But speed. So when we've gone riding with other bike riders, they generally want to stay around 20, 22 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour is the top speed on this bike. So you can go faster, but then that's all going to be you pedaling. So my thing is, if you want that kind of speed, this isn't your bike. For me, this is a 13 mile an hour relaxed bike. Obviously you can go a little faster if you need it. Super smooth. I wanna talk about all the parts and why it's so super smooth. So you got your nice parts. You get your Tektro hydraulic brakes. I love to see that, mm -hmm. really, really feels nice. You have a Gates crank set. And so this is a Gates carbon fiber belt, nice and quiet, but only one speed. It's a single speed drivetrain, which means you know going up hills and stuff, you're relying on the motor way more. Right, and I mean, it has its advantages. There's no grease, there's no worry about 30, breaking a chain. 30,000 kilometers of maintenance free. And again, goes back to the simple. If you're looking for a bike you don't have to think about, that's for you. If you're one of those people who loves to tinker, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> right, so you don't have to think about your chain rusting, which is really nice, but when you're going up that hill, you can't downshift. Right. And the belt makes this an extremely quiet ride. Yeah, really nice. When, whenever you're pedaling, the thing is almost entirely silent. There's a little bit of motor hum, but it's one of the quieter hub motors that we've heard. When you let off the pedals, it you'll get that, mm -hmm. but that's just because you're biking. All of the parts are MyVice. So you're getting a MyVice 350 watt hub motor, a MyVice C201 controller, really nice and small, we're gonna talk about that. You're getting a MyVice S200 torque sensor, and I love this thing. It's a smart torque sensor, which means that if you're riding along and you're just doing this with your, your feet, nothing happens you're like, oh no, it's not working. But as soon as you put in force, it somehow knows magically that you are wanting that and it starts to react. It's yeah. really nice. So, I mean, yeah, that is the torque sensing. It was a premium feature. I feel like it's starting to become more of a standard feature as we go forward in time. Mm -hmm. I really like torque sensing. Most people like torque sensing. It makes it feel like a bike yeah. as opposed to a weird electric on motorcycle. Machine, right? Yeah, yeah. you never get that on off feeling with this. It just feels like it's you doing the work. So this came really well packed. There's a little bit of work you're gonna have to do. So you're gonna have to put on the handle bars. You have to put on the front mud guard. You're going to have to put on the front wheel and you're going to put the seat in. It took about 30 minutes if you're good at it, 45 minutes if you're not. Pretty straightforward, really nicely packed. Comes in four colors. Comes in the pebble gray that you're seeing here. And by the way, all four colors are matte finish. You can get the sky blue, pebble gray, the midnight black, and the avocado green. And I think one of the reasons why this looks so good is because these upper sections, the welds have been uh, cleaned up. Yeah. And by that, you mean you can't see the welds at all. If you come down here, you can start to see some of the weld marks. They did not clean those up. That would have been more expensive and the bike would have cost more. Right. 10 Ways gives you a 14 day trial. I think that's really smart. So when you do get the box, save all the packing material in case you don't like it, you want to be able to ship it back to them. Comes with a two year warranty as well, which is nice. And in the 48 states, I think it's two day free shipping. So that's really nice. Let's just talk about price. $16.99 from their website. You can get the kickstand and the mud guards included. So that's a $200 extras that you're getting included. I think that's pretty nice. I think the price is kind of, they just hit it perfectly. Mm -hmm. For what you're getting, $16.99 seems like the right price for me. 
I would agree. The torque sensing is such a nice feature. You get the belt. The motor is powerful enough. We're going to get into that a little bit more. But overall, just really well built. Feels really good. Feels very premium. And $16.99 is an excellent category for that. But let's talk about range. Range, you cannot trust any of the range numbers because it's not their fault. There's just too many variables. They state that this has a 53 mile range. There's an asterisk. Of course, conditions vary. I'm going to tell you right now, if you push this bike hard, you're going to get nowhere near that range. If you're going to relax on it, you can get that range. So that is a big question for you, right? Because you may need it to go 53 miles if you have a long commute. Only consider that real if you're just going to do relaxed riding. Here's where I kind of call this a cycler's biker or somebody who likes to ride a bike, get some exercise. I think that you can achieve that kind of range if you essentially shut off the motor for the easy parts of your ride. Hmm. I'm, I'm not saying that this is for everybody. I don't like to ride this way, but I think that there are some people who don't want to get an e-bike because they don't, you know, that's, they're not getting enough exercise. This bike, first of all, in level one uh, pedal assist, I would say it's about a 50% reduction in how much energy you have to put in, mm -hmm. um, but you're still getting a nice workout but you can shut it off and this thing doesn't weigh 80 pounds. Mm -hmm. It has nice thin tires. Right. So you are able to actually pedal it without the motor's assistance, which is not something you can say about all e-bikes. This means that you could ride it around just like a normal bike. And then when you're tired and it's time to go home, you can kick on that motor, uh, head up those hills and head home. I think that that's an interesting use case for it and one where the range isn't gonna be so impacted. But let's talk about it if you're a normal person who bought a bike that's going to be easier to pedal. This battery is too small depending on how far you want to go. Right. So it's a 360 watt hour battery. They kept it small so they could keep the frame small. And again, if you're riding on fairly level ground at slow speeds, it'll give you that range, I bet. But if you're pushing it hard at all, I just saw my range numbers drop quickly. Now, if you want to be watching your range while you ride, you can get the 10 Ways app, mount that to your phone onto the handlebars, and it's nice. It'll show your estimated range as you ride. And you don't even need the app. You can cycle through the menus and it will tell you your range. And it does seem to be impacted by what pedal level you're in, which is cool. I'm just not sure how confident I was in that range, but it is nice that you, it's one of the only bikes where you can actually see a range estimate on the bike itself. It's one of the only bikes that has a decent enough battery indicator where I actually think that the battery indication is correct. Mm. And that leads me to another point, which is that it scares Zach and I to see the battery number go down because on most e-bikes, they just straight up lie to you. Mm -hmm. It's like 100% and you're like- For two I, hours. I, it's been two hours of me riding through the woods, really pushing this bike. Why hasn't the battery gone down? It's like, no, it's at 100% these other bikes. And then it'll be like, hang on, now you're at 75. Now you're at 50. Now you're at 25%. I'm dead. Most battery indicators suck. This one's actually pretty good. Yeah. And I think that that has led to Zach and I to be like, oh no, it's not saying 100% when it, it's not at 100%. Right, yeah, when I was pushing it hard though, you could see it going down pretty fast. And yes. so that's why I'm saying, if you're in level three, doing a lot of like hills and stuff, you're gonna lose range really quick. Right, and again, it's just the battery is too small for long uh, drives. Um, let's go over a few more details that you guys probably wanna know about. So it's got 700C aluminum rims. Uh, they're CST tires. A nice balance for me between grip and being thin. Mm -hmm. It's got a 35 Lux headlight, which is really nice. Uh, one little little feature that I like. A lot of times when I turn on a headlight on an e-bike, I have to put my hand in front of it to see if it's on during the day. This one you can actually see from the, the rider position that it is on or off, which is nice. And you can easily turn it on and off with the controller. Let's talk about the controller here. Really simple, really sleek, gives you everything you need to know. It's an OLED display, so it's easy to see and even bright sunlight. And it just gave me everything I needed and nothing I didn't. So I really like it. Again, you don't really know there's an e-bike if you're not trained because look, this is so thin and there's no big controller on the top. And this is kind of an interesting thing to talk about. A lot of e-bikes have a lot of handlebar clutter, mm -hmm. right? You, well, you got shifters, you got a big thing, a big screen in the middle telling you what's going on and then controls over on the side, which doesn't leave you a lot of room for like, mounting a phone or some kind of a GPS system or even another light. You can see here, this is all you need to ride it. A lot of real estate. You have a lot of real estate on the handlebars. You have a lot of actual room to stick stuff on there. I think that that's a really nice feature. You know what else I like is that you can pivot right here. So you can bring that handlebar up if you like a more upright riding, uh, like in Europe, which I like. And if you don't, if you like to be down more, you can do that too. But Keep if you take a look, you will see that the rider position is very, 
Yeah. Over the handlebar kind of thing. Yeah, so it comes in three sizes. We're gonna put up a chart here so that you can see all the different dimensions so you can figure out what you need. So pause it and decide. Um, the other thing I'd wanna point out, if you wanna save a little money, this is the 600 Pro. There is the 600 um, and that weighs four pounds less and it costs $200 less and it has a little bit less battery juice. So a little bit, uh, 10 miles less range but maybe that's all you need. So check that out if you're interested. It doesn't have the integrated headlight, but everything else is very similar. On their website, they have about 50 reviews of this bike and most of them are glowing and they seem real. Um, I read through a bunch of them. They don't seem like that fake kind of review. Um, and that's just nice to see. It shows that a lot of people do actually get a lot out of this bike. And I do think that if this is in your budget and if the kind of asterisks we just gave you there about being relaxed and simple and quiet are what you're looking for, then I would seriously consider this bike. And because you can do that 14 day trial period, mm. it takes a lot of the risk out of it for you. Yeah, I would say that the things that I don't like about the bike personally are gonna be the rider position. I'm putting so much pressure on my hands and I don't really like that very much. And also with no suspension, with no front fork suspension, you feel every bump in your hands as opposed to just your butt. Yeah, I tried it on my famous, um, bump that I never remember is there. And uh, yeah, it was it was jarring, but that's the way bikes are. And you're only getting the cushion from the tires. Right. But you know, most of you who are out there who have ridden actual bikes, you're not used to suspension anyway. So that's what I'm saying, if that's kind of your thing. I just would say though, if you're new to e-bikes and you're like, I don't know guys, is this the bike for me? Think about suspension for a second. It'll cost you a little bit more, but it'll allow you to hit those bumps and that's nice. Also think about fat tires as opposed to these thinner tires. We're big proponents of fat tires Harder to put the bike up into your um, bike rack or into your car, but again, it makes for a more leisurely relaxed ride when you're on it. These are just the questions you guys have to figure out. Um, so watch, you know, watch the video of me riding it. Think about how you would ride it. And also think about this here. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this kind of frame. Yeah, I don't know why this kind is the men's bike and the lower bar is the women's bike. I think it should be the opposite. I Actually, I think that everyone should have a, a lower bar. I hate having this ball crusher here because yeah, if you come to a stop too quickly and the bike, I mean, this one luckily is short enough to where I can stand semi comfortably right. um, over this bar, but there are a lot of e-bikes. And I think if you get the larger version of this, where you're probably going to uh, not love that. I know that it's a standard bike thing. I just personally don't see why it is a thing. Um, it's something to think about. Yeah, because the step throughs to me just give you so many more advantages. It's so much more relaxing to have that available to you. I think it's because in the past you couldn't build a frame that didn't do this. And now you can because, you know, materials and welds have gotten so much better. But all in all, I'm a fan of 10 ways. We love our 800S. Um, this is the 600 Pro. And I'm just always excited to find out new things coming out of 10 ways. Let us know down in the comments below what you think, questions that you have, things you want us to review. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and the like button. That helps us grow the channel, helps us do all those giveaways that we do. Don't forget, we give away a lot of stuff. And we'll see you next time on Now Let's Review.